So, a few hours later, I managed to do all the panels on all four sides. Um, took me most of the afternoon, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so it did pay to mark them out. Um, it's worked out quite well. The, the front and back ones are a half a millimetre um, difference to the end ones um, in width. So the next thing is I've already made a start on putting some one mil square strip around the top. I've done the two ends. Uh, what I'm going to do now is concentrate on the round strip which goes around the bottom of the tank. That's two mil rod and as you can see if I turn it this way up you can see I've actually mated it so we should get a nice good joint on the corners. Um, so that's where we are. What we're going to be looking at now is the, the, the cover that goes on the outside. So what I'm planning to do for that is just a couple of strips of this 0 0.25 one either side of the joint there, one there, one there and then a piece of this 2 mil rod down the centre Then that would give the illusion that there's a cover there. I have cut my two strips and I've laid one in there and I'm just going to tack it with this plastic weld and hopefully it'll stay in place Yeah, that's got a hold of it there, so just got to do the top bit. Just seems to work. Right, so that's one piece in. just sits nicely underneath that uh, round bar. That's the other bit. Hopefully that should just give the illusion. Now there's a panel there. If I just cut that bit round bar and that should do the trick. You'll just take a little corner off of there. There you go. Right, as you can see, I've added a copper ring into the centre of one of these panels. Now, I made them using the copper wire just coiling it up round 5.5 mil drill just wrapping it round nice and tight and then just cutting it one cut straight down the middle and it gives you hopefully well hopefully I've got enough there to do the whole tank. So when that's painted up, we should have 
some sort of looks like something like this, hopefully. Now the tricky part is keeping them all in the center. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm super gluing them on. Just a round blob of super glue. And then trying to maneuver them. But first of all, they come out like that, so you've got to get them flat. So I'm just squashing the ends together and twisting at the same time just to take the stress out of the coil. Hopefully that will stay flat enough to stick to the card. Glue's evaporated already. Right. So I'll just quickly manoeuvre it because you ain't got much time with super glue. And then just tie it up. So I seem to have run out, so I've got to make some more. So I'm showing you how how it's uh, done. So basically, you just wrap it round nice and tight around your 5.5 mil drill, and then when you think you've got enough, just push them together as hard as possible, just to try and equalise the copper, and hold it tight, and then twist them. Push the clothes together just to try and get them equally round. And then that's it. Peel them off. All you've got to do is just one cut right through a lot of them. All I'm doing is just tying them up the center of the panel as best I could. That's it, that's the last one. Looks too good to paint. So the next thing now is to add some one mil rod for the corners just to hide the plastic card strip joint there. So I'll do that with all four corners. So that's the plastic 0.75 rotting done and basically I've followed all the struts around so it just gives it a bit more depth. Right so we're almost there. Um, the next piece to do is all the little cross pieces in between the, the rings and the um, edges, all the diagonal bits. That's going to take me a while to do that. So as you can see I'm adding some plastic strip now. This is 0.25 by 0.75 and this gives the illusion that there's banding um, on the panels. As you can see it's a fiddly little job. This contact of cement seems to work on card as well. And as you can see by adding the layers of plastic strip from the two mil to the 0.75 rod just seems to bring it out um, and forms the panels. 
So at last I've come to the last two pieces of uh, plastic strip for the detailing of these panels. Um, it's taken us a couple of evenings to do this, um, which is more time than I was expected. And uh, so here we are, the last two pieces. And they are a little bit fiddly these. Good stuff. It's good stuff this glue. It just um, gives you a little bit of time to manipulate these little pieces in place. And with it being card it just seems to evaporate as well which is good because you can hardly see the glue last piece There we go, all done. Alright, we'll let that dry for a little while. And then uh, there's only one more bit of plastic strip to go over the top there, and that's to, to hide the card edge, uh, which is just um, 2 mil by 0 0.25. It'll go over the card edge and the one mil square strip on the side so that'll finish that off once that's done we can paint it so as you can see I've been putting the strip around the top and I've um, mitered the corners and the best way to do that is to take the measurement from the inside to outside and then once you get your first miters in place it's just a case of trimming it to the mitre you want to actually get it to slot in there. So this is the last piece, plastic strip. And uh, what I'll do as well is to make sure that the plastic strip is sticking to the card. I'll just run a little tiny bit of super glue, just spot it in a few places, just until the glue goes off. So at last, uh, the tank is done, um, so we'll let that dry for about half an hour or so, and then um, we'll give it a coat of paint. Now then, the colour. I think I like the colour we have in this photograph. This dark blue, I like, I like the look of that, so I'll probably paint it in that colour. And um, once that's painted, there's only two, well no, three details left to do. There's a chimney breast, which I'm going to add, which is on the back. The, the frame, the walk frame on the top here, and the overflow pipe. So I've mixed some paint up. Um, I've used matte 109 and black matte 33 three parts blue one part black and I've got this really dull greyish blue so let's see what it looks like Yeah, I might have to give it a couple of coats. I think 
think it looks a little bit too black. I think I might have to add a bit more blue to it. So it's now going to be four parts blue. I think I prefer that square there. It's got a little bit more blue in it. Right, I shall carry on with this, see what it looks like when it's finished. And here we have the water tower. Uh, I don't know if you can spot anything different about this water tower. Yep, 10 out of 10. I have painted the door red. So I'm quite happy with the colour and the way the tank has come out. Um, I've also painted the top uh, a um, really darkened colour of this tank here. All I did was whatever paint was left over, I added some black and then painted that. Um, I've still got to varnish this yet so that will probably come later so on the whole by building up the layers of plastic strip because here we have the one mil rodding and behind the one mil rodding you have the 0 0.75 by 2 mil and it just brings out the look of the ironwork and the panels So, there's a couple of things left to do. I've made a start on the landing, which is going to go across the top. So, let's just um, go back to the photograph. So, here is the photograph, and, and there's the landing. It's like an L shape. Um, if you cast your eye across this um, cover here it comes across to the third upright one two three and then the walkway goes away from us so basically I'm just doing guesswork for the um, walkway now the thickness of the walkway I've just used a little bit of two mil and one mil so that's three mil total in thickness for the card wise so I think the proportions is correct for the walkway so the next thing to do is to do the handrail um, which goes all the way around um, as you see in the photograph there's bits of the handrail missing but in the older black and white photograph the handrail goes all the way around so I shall do it like that so that's the next thing but the first thing to do is to score the panels so it looks like there's boarding on there because it would have been boarding so I have scribed the walkway with a pen so hopefully these imprints will come through when we paint it a black mat now to get the height of a handrail just pop this little fella on here now the handrail I'd imagine come just above waist height so if we look at that there so that's roughly 13 millimeters so we'll see 13 millimeters plus the thickness of the card that we got which is three so that's 16 millimeters and if we look at the photograph, we can actually see the handrail coming down in line with the base of the walkway. And another thing 
I've noticed this planks going across underneath the walkway which is actually supporting the walkway so I must remember to put them in so I'll need four of them there's one two three and four see I've added some coffee stirring sticks um, just to uh, make up the supports for the walk rail and as you can see This will give you an idea of what that will look like when it's done. I've already stuck the first post on. Um, there's four posts across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a post in this corner, the same height, then glue a piece of plastic strip across the top and then make sure each post after that will hit the top rail. Here is I'm using two types of glue. I'm using the old super glue and the old contact adhesive just to place this little handrail support in place. Hopefully it will stick this time. Right there we go. Just gotta move this handrail a little bit. Straighten it up. Right, have a look at it. Right, so that's one set done. I have now completed the handrails on the landing now. Um, all I did for the mid rail is use some 0.25 by 0.75 plastic strip. And all the rest of it is made out of 1mm square plastic strip. And that seems to finish it off. But uh, I still have another piece of plastic strip just to put it on the top just to add a little bit extra detail some 2 mil, just so I've got a nice little hand ledge um, which kind of matches what's in the in the photograph so uh, we're almost coming to the end of this video so let's go and have a look at the water tower now I'm quite happy with the way the tank has come out um, it really has changed the look of this building. Um, this is where it's going to be sited on the layout. And there's still a couple of extra details to add to um, this water tower. There's the chimney that goes on the back, which um, I'm still not 100% sure about. Um, but um, during the comments, um, some of you have mentioned that they normally use the chimney for keeping the tank warm and stop it stopping it from freezing up in the winter months but um, yeah that's a possibility anyway there's still the um, downpipe to add or the overflow pipe which goes on the side and a ladder um, so that they can get up to this um, landing which is uh, quite not finished yet so yes, once that's done, um, we can move on to the next building. Right, so I think that's just about all from me this week, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And uh, we'll see you again next Friday. But just before we go, um, I had some photographs from Barry Turner. Um, he was the winner of the other signal box. Um, the twin signal box to this and it's on his layout and I tell you what it looks quite good on his layout it's weird seeing something I've built go on someone else's layout um, um, which is fantastic so we'll finish off looking at uh, some of his photographs right until then stay safe everybody and we'll see you next time on Tony Northeastern bye for now bye